excited we're kind of excited you know we just got back from Las Vegas so you know they're a little excited here in New York we're glad to be home tonight I thought I would cook you know it's getting to be that time of the year now and I thought we would cook with that all-american berry if you don't mind the cranberry you know the cranberry you know Well, you probably, all of you are thinking about, you know, the wiggly can type, you know, that you plot down and holiday table, you know, and it's got the wiggle, you know, that, no, 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 we're not talking about the wiggle cranberry, no. We're going to do some cranberry dishes from scratch tonight. For the holiday season coming up or any special occasion, I'm going to teach you how to make a very, very simple, well, that wiggle stuff. I'm going to show you the real wiggle instead of the somewhat, anyhow. It's early yet, Mom. And then we're going to take some of that and we're going to make this delicious seared foie gras with Pan Perdue, sort of the New Orleans version. Oh, it's a food of love thing. Food of love thing. And then for dessert, you're not going to believe this. I'm going to show you all the semi-sweet chocolate that we're going to make this semi-sweet chocolate cranberry trifle. Oh. To die for! So if it's okay with you, we're going to kick up cranberries tonight. A few notches on Emerald Live! Welcome, welcome. Nice to have you here. Before we get uh, in the cranberry mode, give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. <laughs> Ladies, how are you? Welcome. Good to have you. So how much do you guys really know about cranberry? So this looks like the cranberry crowd over here. <laughs> Let's go mess with them over here, Jay. Go right down the line. You know, actually, there are... Um, well, a few cases right now. See, this is the number one food crop. I'm having problems here. Don't ask me why, but it's that over-the-shoulder, boulder holder kind of thing. <laughs> now it's holding just fine. Now, so this is the typical, you know, that wobbly. And this is not too wobbly either. This is just straightforward like, mm. Or you can buy that stuff like, you know, that, which is all very good. Cranberry muffins, one of my favorites. But these days, this has become very, very popular, particularly in the last five years. This is when they take them and they actually dry them. So they're like raisins, except they're cranberries, and they're really good for you because they have a lot of vitamin C. Good thing about cranberries. Now, did you know that cranberries are the number one food crop or food item in Massachusetts? Number one. And... Uh, I'm going to show you how they kind of do that, because basically, if you will, a really quick lesson of this, there's basically two ways that they can pick them. They run this time of the year, basically grow from uh, late April to around November, and then they got to harvest them. Uh, and they really are a North American food group. It's really one of three of the real North American food groups. Blueberries, only North America. Cranberries, North America. Do you know what the other one is? Anybody? All right, we'll save that later for a quiz. <laughs> right now, we're talking cranberries. <laughs> then, there's two ways that you can harvest them. You can what they call dry pick them, where they have these machines and they kind of look like, you know, those beater machines. And they go and they just pick them off the bush, you know, off the bushes. Or, which most common in Massachusetts, they actually flood the cranberry bogs. Do you know how they tell if cranberries are good when they're 
harvest them like that? Because if they, well, I did some right here to show you. Look. See, what they do is when they float the cranberry bogs, and they flood them, see, they float like this, you see? So then these machines come and with rakes, and they just kind of do that like that. Then there's a grading system for, I don't make this stuff up. Really. <laughs> there's a grading system about four inches, right? And you know how they tell if the cranberry is good or not, that it makes the process? It's by the bounce. I know. Have you ever heard that? Because every good cranberry will have a bounce. If it doesn't, see? See that? We're three for three. It's all in the bounce, you see? I told you I didn't make this stuff up. When we come back, another notch. Stick around. Back in. Just joining us, cranberries is the uh, what's on the old menu tonight. We just talked about how they're harvested, and I uh, hope you didn't miss the bounce. <laughs> it's all in the bounce. So earlier I was talking about the three North American food products, cranberries being one, blueberries being another one, Concord grapes, Concord grapes. That's the other one, North America. Outside of that, very little. Recently, uh, not too long ago, we were over in Portugal doing a little research. Couldn't find a cranberry. I had like an urge, you know, like, you know, the old cranberry and... <laughs> and could not find a cranberry. No juice, no berries, nothing. So I went straight. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to show you this, how to make your own wiggle with the holidays coming up. Cranberries. Rinse them. You don't want to rinse them? Fine with me. <laughs> well, you've got to rinse them. I mean, how do you know where they came from? They don't say pre-washed on the bag, like <laughs> certain other veggies, you know, or lettuces. Yeah. They're very taut, very high in vitamin C. Make this for the holiday time. Simple, simple, simple. In a sauce pot. Yes, you could use nonstick. Yes. Water to cover it. A little more than cover it. What's going to happen is these little, they start cooking a little bit, these berries. Then they stop popping. And that's when that love comes out of them, you know? <laughs> but you got to make them happy. They're not happy right now. How you make them happy is this. I like to add the juice of one or two lemons. So you would think differently. You would think, why am I adding more acidity to something that already has a lot of acidity? It's that balanced chemistry thing. Trust me, just try it. A little orange juice I like in my wiggly thing. <laughs> and then some sugar. You got to get them sweet. I mean, you got to sweeten them up. So you add some sugar. Now, you probably heard of this word. When this comes together and it starts cooking and the berries begin to stop popping, this is what turns into a cranberry compote. Okay? So now you don't even ha you don't have cranberry wiggly, you have cranberry compote. So, what I like to do with my compote is I like to take the juice of one orange and, excuse me, the um, zest of one orange, it's the berries, it's all in the bounce, and lemon. So I got orange zest, lemon zest, orange juice, lemon juice, cranberry sugar, water. Wow. 
We're talking rocket science right now. <laughs> then, what I like to do, <laughs> I like to add a little vanilla to mine. Just a tiny bit of vanilla. Real vanilla. There's just some, can you smell that? Can you smell that, how that vanilla went in there? Oh, instantly it just went. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing when you add just a little bit of that. All right, so now you cook it, cook it, simmer, it pops, crackles, like this. See, this is what it looks like after about 20, 30 minutes. See that? It's popping, starting to get thick. Some people, what some people will do is, some people will like it just like such, or natural. That's okay, I'm an all natural kind of guy. And if you want it all natural, fine, but it's gonna be a little watery. See how it is right there? If you wanna put the old jiggle wiggle in it, like over there, but in your own way, here's how you do that. You take cornstarch, about three tablespoons, cold water, you can't use hot water. It has to be dissolved in cold water. Just enough to cover it. Then you take a whisk and make sure that the cornstarch is dissolved in the water. This is the thickening agent. Not a roux. We wouldn't use a roux in there. We would be kind of foolish. You could use arrowroot. Hey, I don't have any. I got cornstarch. So here's what you do. Now you take this cold to this hot. Watch what's going to happen. We're talking serious jiggle wiggles coming up. Now, when you do this, folks, remember, it's never going to be at its right thickening or the thickening, full thickening power until it comes to a boil. At which case, as I've said many, many times, invest in some of these inexpensive wooden spoons. See that? That's got enough jiggle wiggle for me. We're going to cook this for a minute. This is going to be our cranberry sauce, or you can call it compote if you'd like, or whatever you want to call it. Call it wiggly wiggly. <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. An awesome foie gras dish with Pan Purdue New Orleans style. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back it. <laughs> Gibbs and Cliff. <laughs> bonjour, buongiorno, buenas noches. You have landed on Emerald Live. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, after you keep stirring this for a while, good thickness, still kind of hot. So the best thing for that, you let it cool. You can do it right on the stove, just keep stirring it a little bit. And then what you want to do, you can do this day, two days, three days before Thanksgiving. See, these are the uh, Christmas, whatever. These are the kind of things you can do in advance. You don't have to get like all stressed out, you know? They got like this 911 police, you know, academy <laughs> crew running around with these, you know, colored chef hats and stuff, you know, like, freeze, you know? <laughs> Come on. There's enough stress in life. I have enough stress, like, walking across the street. <laughs> Take it easy. It's just cranberry compote. <laughs> when it cools down, you just put it nice, nice in your bowl like this. Pretty color, right? Yeah, yeah you know, one of those potluck things. Bring over some compote. <laughs> put a little sprig of mint, you know, hey, that's it, forget it. Or you could bring this next dish. But this is a dish that you want to cook and serve because it has foie gras. Yeah, it's, you know, holiday time. I figured, what the heck? It's the Food Network's budget anyhow. So. <laughs> What's a little foie gras, you know, $50, $80 amongst friends, you know? But I'm using French toast, you know? Here's how you do this. In New Orleans, we have this thing called pan perdue. Delicious. 
It's on the breakfast menus. They flavor them different way. Pour cane syrup, powdered sugar on it. Oh! So, taking that, what you do is we take a few eggs in a little pan like this. We're going to make our batter. Then I've got a little bit of cream. <laughs> now, I don't like this too thinned out. You can always add. I'm going to show you another trick. I rarely show this to many people, but cinnamon in here. Oh, you smell that? Yes. can feel the love in here right now. It's unbelievable. Now, I'm going to show you a trick that I don't often show many people. What's your name, honey? Lauren? Could you grab one of those oranges for me right there, honey, please? Don't worry about it. Wendy won't get mad at you. We're <laughs> still... Throw it. Thanks. <laughs> it's going to be good now that Lauren helped me. Sometimes, folks, I'll show you a little trick. You want to do this for the kids in the morning. Pan Purdue French toast, it's the same, you know, animal. I squeeze a little bit of fresh orange juice like that in there. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. You really want to kick it up, squeeze it all in there. You know, a whole one in there. I don't want any seeds, though. Look. There's something about the fresh juice like that, that you squeeze it, and the oil that's like in the peel like that. I don't know. They always thought I was funny, so. You know. <laughs> Can I say? So now we've got our batter with our orange juice and cinnamon in them. All right. Then you can either use like a non-stick pan or you can use a nice quality pan or you probably got a cast iron pan, whatever you have. Then we're going to take our French bread, Italian bread, Portuguese bread, whatever you got. I cut it on a bias like this. Give that one to the dog. <laughs> then I cut it like this, you see? Yeah, but let me show you the key here. This is like no wimpy like French toast. The key is this. See, you got to cut it on the bias. You got to let that s sit in there. How's that going to be happy? You kind of just do this thing. You think it's happy? That's like a tease. <laughs> so let it in there for a little bit. Then what you do when you're ready, you take your pan. Uh, we're going to go like to medium. Medium, that would be this one. <laughs> M-E-D, not the M-E-D-L-O-W, but the M-E-D. Yeah. Medium, wipe it out real nice. I got a little clarified butter. Why? I use whole butter in here, it would be great, but it will burn because the fat and the butter. So how do you do clarified butter? put the butter in the pan, you slowly simmer it, and you start taking away, skimming the fat off the top, which I like, by the way. But, clarified, okay? We'll put a little clarified butter in here. You don't want to get this too, too hot now. This is getting super happy, right? While that's happening like that, oh yeah, that's getting real happy right now. Then what you can do is now put your French toast in there. Oh, yeah, babe. We're going to just start with one portion for me. Now, while that's happening, believe it or not, after we had a lot of those people that did that www.foodtv.com, Emerald Live thing, and told us what they want, we actually took a team of us recently, a couple of area grocery stores outside of the city here, in a few of the boroughs in Connecticut and Jersey, and we were able to find this stuff. If not, there's an 800 number for it. You can get all that stuff on that WW thing. This is foie gras, duck liver. In Europe, it used to be made with goose liver all the time. Now, particularly in upstate New York, they do a lot of this, and... It comes in different grades, A, B, C. The higher the grade, what supposedly happens is the cleaner the inside is, okay, which means you don't have to take a lot of that stuff out of it. But big restaurants, 
Now you can do this at home. You can get this stuff at home. And I was joking earlier about it being like, you know, $180. It's only like, you know. <laughs> so I like to just cut a small piece. See, that's what I was talking about, that stuff in there. You're supposed to really clean that. Okay? Well, I'm not trying to be gross. I'm just I'm trying to show you so that if you do this at home, what I generally do to clean it, That's how simple it is, okay? Now, let's go check. Make sure we're not uh, have blackened French toast here. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, I can feel the love. You smell that in there? That orange and the vanilla? All right. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a couple of pieces of this right here. Now, it's going to get a little smoky, hot skillet, salt and pepper. <laughs> now, I'm going to sear this about a minute or two minutes on each side. I'm going to take it out of the pan. Everybody with me? Yeah. Then you see the oil, that foie gras oil? Oh, why throw that out? I'm going to add some of that cranberry compote in there when we come back. Another knot! Stick around! Not good! from Doc Gibbs and Cliff. <laughs> Thought that was a song like that group from the Cranberries, but it was Cranberry Music by Doc Gibbs and exactly, Cliff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It. It's a little confused, I'm sorry. No All right, we took that foie gras out, the French toast out, keeping it nice and warm. You see how much oil we have, four pieces of that? We kind of get that off the stove a little bit, and then what we do is we kind of take a little bit of that cranberry sauce or compote, if you will, and we make a little happy happy here, which I'll show you in a second. Look, you could pour that over your body and it would be happy. You know, it just, I mean, it's just something like that about foie gras. At least for me, you know what I mean? Maybe not for you, but see, it's that, oh, it's just that love thing. Yeah, you could, uh, you could mix the, you mean the foie gras? No, the, the cranberry. The cranberry juice. Yeah, you could uh, probably... Well, not probably. I know this for an example because I've done this. And this is another. You could take this compote right here in a bowl. Maybe add just a little more acidity and then whisk in olive oil. You'd have a great Ooh. cranberry dressing for like a fall oh. salad. You could put some like chopped pears like blue cheese. Oh. You know what I'm saying? You feeling the love right now? You know? <laughs> cranberry vinaigrette. Yeah. Maybe some toasted walnuts. What? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, bring that over for the potluck supper, right? All right, now here's what we're going to do. We take a little piece of this French toast, and then we take this foie gras compote of love. Sometimes you can add a little bit of whipped cream, too. <laughs> then basically, you just put that, and you, one piece of that is generally enough. If you, like, want to, like, get you know, over the top, then what you could do is build a little sandwich of that, you know? Another, another piece of pan Purdue, another piece of foie gras. Oh! <laughs> Here's how I like to finish it, just this simple. Look, you just take a little bit of great foie gras dish. Oh, this and a little, uh, a sauterne. <laughs> Turn the lights out, baby. <laughs> like the candles. <laughs> so look. That's how simple it is. You can use a little bit of chive, which sounds crazy, but a little bit of chive like that would be fantastic. And there you have a little, ladies, a little pan Purdue with you. foie gras right Thank there. You. All right, look, I'm going to build one more. Ooh, yeah.
I told you guys earlier that um, one of the things that I just couldn't believe, I always have been like a fan of like, you know, a cranberry apple pie. Still am, you know. But, ladies, be careful now. That's all I want. Don't be sounding off any sirens. <laughs> but I started kind of thinking, you know, uh, just kind of like from hearing you guys and, you know, reading the website thing or what you guys are, you know, all that email stuff. And, and um, this is one of those dishes that were inspired from there. I took a one-pound cake pan, and uh, you can lightly flour it, and then you can um, or lightly butter it first, then, then flour it. I mean, that's like, you know, rocket science, right? So that way it doesn't stick. And then I wanted to kind of do a little different deal. So I want to show you this dynamite cake. And whether you do it with cranberries or not, using semi-sweet chocolate, or in this case, I'm using cocoa. You're always kind of like wondering, scratching your head, like what you do with cocoa, you know, beside like, you know. <laughs> well, here's, here's a way. And the density of this, the moistness of this cake with these cranberries, with this compote. Oh, let me, well, I'm going to show you. I've got some butter here in a little mixer. And we want to soften that up, what is called, if you read a recipe, cream. You want to cream that. Okay, it works fine with me. And then how we cream that, basically, is also with sugar. So you got butter or a fat. And then you got sugar, which we're going to add in here. Bring that back up. Now, you want to do this, obviously, you know, low, especially since I like these guys here, you know. <laughs> don't want to, like, kick the machine on 20 and, you know, decorate their hair at the same time, you know. So now that this is coming together and it's creaming, the next step is adding whole eggs. Okay, so you got your fat, shortening of butter. In this case, we're using butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're using sugar. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start one egg at a time. And you'll see what will happen as the, as the fat starts sort of blooming like that a little bit. It'll start coming off the sides of the bowl. Very, very important process for cake making. Now, I'm going to show you one more trick of mine. A little bit more vanilla, just a touch. But I'm using that pure, pure vanilla stuff, you know, not that imitation. <laughs> so, here's a trick for those of you just starting to bake. After this process, this is why they make, like, these plastic things like this. You see these spatulas? They come, like, some with, like, a scoop some, they come flat. Look, you can get them in nice decorative colors, <laughs> you know. The reason for that is, is that you need to scrape this down. You see, see what, what, what's happening there? See how much is on the side of the bowl? Well, if I was to go ahead right now and finish this whole process by not scraping it down, we'd have a lot of lumps. Now, is it going to hurt you to have a lot of lumps? Not really, but you will like, look like a fool with your family. You cut the cake and you got like these big, white, nasty lumps in there. You know, I mean, come on. So, you know, just take a little time, scrape it down. All right. No, they're not food pimples. No. They're lumps. All right, now that we got that in there, now see, it's going to be all happy. Here's the next thing to show you guys. Take a little baker's paper like this. What we're going to do is this. We're going to take our cocoa. We're going to take our flour. Baking powder. That's another leavening agent, right? That's what's going to make it poofy. And then you want to do this. Now, there's a lot of, like, wise tales of why you, like, sift flour. You know, everybody thinks that the wise tale is, oh, you sift the flour because in case some bugs got in there, you know, last month when I was, like, you know, mowing the grass. It's kind of crazy, you know. Look, if there's bugs in there, you're going to know there's bugs in there, you know. They're not going to be, like, hiding, you know, playing hide-and-seek with you, like, when you're in the house. 
If it's got bugs, you're going to know it. The reason for this is, is that I'm getting like air into this, if you will, okay? I'm like flushing it up. So it's going to really, look, you see that? And that's the other reason why that you sift things. Look, it's natural that flour, particularly cocoa, they have lumps like that until you get it sieved. All right, enough of that. But I just wanted to warn you in case, you know, the uh, flour or cocoa patrol got to your neighborhood. Now, the other easy thing is, especially like liking these ladies here, is that you don't have to go make a mess. What you can do is use this paper to your advantage, okay, and pour this right like this, like such. See that? All right, now, I'm going to put this all together. See, and you go like I'm one. I wouldn't do that to you. See, it's like... <laughs> it's going to come together as a batter. We're going to take this cake batter with no lumps, put it inside of our pan 350 degrees when we come back. Another knot! Stick around! Not this! All right, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Woo. All right. I wanted to show you all at home, we were talking about this semi-sweet chocolate cake thing. Mixer was going on. Look, they're perfectly clean. No redecorations, no fancy hairdos, just we left them alone. Look how thick the cake batter is, though. So unlike a lot of cake batters that you might have done, this is very... Dense, you might say. <laughs> It'll flatten probably the four tires in a Volkswagen, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you want to talk about delicious. 50 minutes-ish. And don't be sticking no toothpick things in there. <laughs> All right? How would you feel? <laughs> Ooh! Oh! I mean, don't go there. 350. 50 minutes, trust me, it's what I do. <laughs> Let it cool on a rack. Not hot. Let it cool. It's a food of love thing. We have our compote. Now we've got chocolate cake. You can either make a very simple chocolate pudding or a chocolate pastry cream, whatever you want. You can go buy one. I don't know if it's going to be the same. You might have to jack it up. How do you jack it up? Well, go over here. Pick one of these things. Any one you want, right? You can, like, have a little game show with yourself. That's what I do in the kitchen. Door number one. Door number two. Sold. Door number three. So. Once it's cool, we'll take a serrated knife. They're the ones with teeth. There's a reason for that. Uh, maybe a quarter of an inch thick. I'm going to show you this now. Now, you don't have to get this fancy if you don't want to. But with all those holiday things coming up, all those potluck, you know what I'm talking about. You know, what do you bring? can only bring green bean casserole so many times. <laughs> Get with the program, as Hilda would say. Yeah, when I come in with the green bean casserole, she's like, what is this? <laughs> oh, sorry, Mom. I won't forget the trifle next time. So look, trifle bowl, one layer chocolate pudding. Nice chocolate cake on the bottom, right? About that much. Make it happy. Oh, relax, 
folks, it's the holiday time. Oh, yeah. It's the holiday time. Then I take that cranberry compote we made. Put some of that on there, right? You with me so far? Yeah. All right. Then what I do is come back for another round. A couple of more pieces of cake like this, right? All right, we'll do one more like this, okay? Make it happy again, you know? It's a holiday time. Come on. Don't be a Scrooge. And add some more of that chocolate pudding stuff like that, right? Then, a little bit more cake. Okay, like that. Make it happy again, you know? Come on! God! Then some more of that cranberry stuff, right, that we made. You guys are with me so far? All right, let me show you how I like to finish this. Ah, why be cheap? It's Christmas. That's the holiday time. We can decorate it like this, decorate it like this, put a little house on it, you see, just like this. Staying nice and warm like that. Okay, then what you do is you take a little bit of whipped cream like this. Ah, it's just a little, it's just a trifle. Put a little of that like that, you know, bam! Just kind of bam it like that. Come back! Another notch! Stick around! Not yet! everybody oh if you just joined us shame on you incredible uh few kicked up dishes with cranberries tonight now if you walked in with this chocolate semi-sweet chocolate cake cranberry trifle into your old potluck neighborhood dinner <laughs> if you want to kind of uh, not do this and uh, and kind of plate it also for the family what I, what I basically can do, I don't generally have this cake on top, although you can, but we'll use that since we've got that there. We can just kind of go down a couple of layers. You see exactly what I mean, how delicious this looks. You see that with the pudding in the cake like that? And a little dab will do you, as they say. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. So... If you wanted to kind of do a nice presentation, then you could just kind of do a little dollop like this of, uh, and then a little bit of that chocolate stuff like that, right? And then, of course, you got to have a little bit of nice fresh mint in there. Just bring out all the holiday colors in one shot. Little powdered sugar like this. Or you can just kind of do some baby bams, you know, bam, 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 like that. And there you have a wonderful holiday dessert, right? Awesome. Now, I got to tell you something. If I was, uh, I had a couple of questions on that WW thing. What would I serve with this for dessert? Beside coffee, of course. Well, you know, um, what goes well with this, you got the acidity of the cranberries that we talked about. Champagne goes with anything. When in doubt, champagne is the way to go around you know, exactly. <laughs> However, uh, you might want to get a little sweetness to that. Uh, the other thing is that you could actually do, which would tie in very, very well, you could take some cranberry juice with and cut it, almost like a mimosa, but cut it with cranberry juice, and it would be a perfect combo with this kind of dessert because you got the richness of the chocolate as well. What can I say? I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody!